Welcome back, everybody, to video number two of the complete beginners course for ICT students. This video is going to be over technicals and fundamentals of trading. So let's get into the first slide here. Introduction to technical analysis. What does technical analysis mean? Technical analysis is a process used to examine and to predict the future prices of securities by looking at things like price movement, charts, trends, trading volume, and other factors. What are the various techniques for technical analysis? So backtesting refers to going back into previous historical data to practice your strategy slash identify specific trends or movements in price. Forward testing refers to engaging with live market and analyzing how you strategy would perform or does perform. So technical analysis is you yourself as the individual, you're looking at a specific asset class and you're analyzing how price is moving, if it's going up, if it's going lower, how you would engage with it. Back testing is something I highly recommend for those who are just beginning because you're able to go back in historical data and be able to journal, see where you'd be able to enter in the market and see how price moves. You, you get really accustomed to it. Forward testing, of course, is sitting down and engaging with the live market. So introduction to technicals. So if you just got into TradingView, as we mentioned before in the first video, you're going to be able to see um, what price looks like. You're gonna see something called a candlestick. So what are candlesticks? A candlestick is a way of displaying information about assets price movement. So there's a few things that make up a candlestick. If you look up at the right-hand corner here, this is what a candlestick looks like. So when I first got into trading, um, this looked intimidating. And I'm sure if you're just getting into trading, all of this looks very intimidating to you. And it did for me. And I'm trying to make these videos to simplify it and get you um, feet wet. So the body, which represents the open to close range, the wick or shadow that indicates where price previously was, the color of the candlesticks re reveals the direction of the market movement. A green body indicates a price increase, while a red or black body shows a price decrease. So you as the individual, you're able to accustom the candlesticks to whatever color you'd like on TradingView. Um, but to keep it simple, a green candlestick is price moving up. A red candlestick is price moving down. So I'm going to go over this as a few things in here. So you can see this is the open of a candlestick. Price once moved lower and then it moved higher. It was once all the way up here and then it closed out there. So at first this didn't make much sense to me and you're going to have to see this with your own eyes while price is moving. But the wicks are where price once was, as mentioned before, it's the shadow, right? It indicates where price previously was. So once it closes, this is the finalized version of the candlestick and that will be set in stone. So you can see there's a few points to what a candlestick is, the open, the low, the high, and the close. So there's four elements to a candlestick. And you can see here, we open, price traded up, came back down, traded lower, created the low of the candlestick, came back, and then closed out. So again, this is just a brief overview of candlesticks, but this is where you're going to be analyzing the market, purely off of candlesticks. Do not be using anything else besides candlesticks on your trading view chart. What does bullish or bearish mean? So a bullish investor believes that price of one or more securities will rise. A bearish investor is one who believes price of assets or slash securities will go down. So this is what a bullish candlestick would look like because it's going up. That's green. A bearish candlestick would look like this or a bearish market would be going down. It's red. So bullish is up, bearish is down. These terms can refer to candlesticks themselves, bullish up candlesticks, bearish down candlesticks. This can also be used when referring to an overall trend of a market or asset class. So if you hear somebody saying a market is really bullish, that means that the market has been going up. If you hear somebody say that the market is bearish, that means that the market is trending lower, it's moving lower. What are time frames? 
time frames refer to how much time each candlestick is. There are multiple time frames when analyzing. Common time frames are monthly, weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 15 minute, five minute. So on your trading view chart or on the platform, you're gonna be seeing a drop down menu of time frames. So one month, this time frame means that one candlestick, it takes one month of data to make up that candlestick. A week, weekly time frame, it takes a whole week of data to make up one weekly candlestick. One day, it takes up a whole day to make one candlestick, and et cetera, for all these time frames. One hour, it will take one hour of data or time to make up one hour candlestick. So when I first got into trading, this was probably the hardest thing for me to understand. And there's no other way to simplify it rather than you going through these time frames and seeing how they all intertwine and they work together. Um, there may be other videos out there that may be able to simplify it for you, but the easiest way that I can put it is each time frame, it will take this amount of time to create that candlestick. So how do I use these in my trading? Well, there be they can be used in various ways depending on your trading style. For instance, if you're a long-term trader, you will likely use the daily, weekly to analyze and position yourself into the market. If you're a short-term trader, you will likely use the one hour and below to analyze and position yourself into the market. Um, you can use all these together to gain a better perspective of the market. So all of these are intertwined. You can use these all together. They make up the entire asset class that you're trading and analyzing. But depending on your style, if you're more or less you have a lot more patience, you like to be in a position um, for a longer period of time, you can use these higher time frames like the monthly, the weekly, the daily. If you're more of a short term, you have a little bit less patience, um, you're gonna be utilizing the one hour time frame and a little bit lower than that because price will be moving a lot quicker um, compared to the higher time frames. Because again, it takes a lot of time to create these candlesticks. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, um, again, I understand because I was once in your shoes and this was the biggest thing that I couldn't understand at first. And it's okay if you don't, it takes a little bit of time, but eventually you will get there and you will understand how to utilize them. So this is where I'd get out your notebooks and really start taking notes and paying attention. So introduction to technicals. Again, technicals is the way that we're able to analyze the market. We're able to see if the market's going up or the market is going down. So technicals is the base foundation for us as analysts. When we look at the market, we're, we're using technical analysis to see, okay, are we going up? Are we going down? Where do I position myself in? So what is market structure? Market structure is a way to indicate whether an asset class is bullish, remember rising, or bearish, declining. How to identify market structure. So for a bullish market structure, price would be making higher highs and higher lows. So if you look at your right-hand corner here, a bullish market structure would be called an uptrend because it's going up. And how would we identify that? Well, we'd be looking at the market structure and seeing, is it making higher highs? As you can see here, HH, that's an abbreviation, for a higher high, and is it making a higher low? If it's continuously going up, making higher highs above this old high here, and then we call a retracement where price is basically breathing out and then breathing back in. So it's making what we call a higher low. And then price will breathe out again to make a new higher high. For a bearish market structure, price would make, be making lower lows and lower highs. So again, if price is in a downtrend, bearish, and you're looking to sell it, then we'd be identifying what is the market structure? Is it moving making new lows and lower highs. So you can see here, we have a lower high, then a lower low. Market breathes in, lower high, that's what we call a retracement, then market breathes out again, lower low, because it's underneath this low here. Then price breathes in again for the retracement, lower high, and then breathes out again for the lower low. So how do I know when the trend is changing? So how do I know if price is going from an uptrend to a downtrend? If price is changing from bullish to bearish price, it would need to break beneath its previous higher low to then create a lower high. This is called a market structure shift. So a market structure shift is how we're able to identify if price is going from an uptrend to a downtrend 
vice versa from a downtrend to an uptrend. And I'll show you here. This is an example from price switching from an uptrend to a downtrend. So you can see we have a higher high, higher low, higher high. We have a higher low in here. Then price fails to get above that higher high in here. And you can see it drops beneath this higher low. So right there when it makes the lower low here, that's what we would call a market structure shift. And that's how we're able to identify, okay, well, I'm no longer in uptrend. So in here, I'm looking for buys, right? I want to keep buying this because it's in, in a bullish structure. And then we see a shift in market structure. Okay, I should no longer be looking to buy. We're now shifting into a downtrend. So then price frees in for retracement at a lower high. And then price sells off here again to make a new lower low. So this is how we're able to identify market structure shifts and when price is changing from uptrends to downtrends. How do I use this in my trading? If you're looking to buy the best scenarios to be buying at a higher low before price makes a new higher high. So the best case scenario for you if you're looking for buys is you want to be buying at each higher low in here. So every time it breathes back in, I want to be buying down here rather than up here, right? I want to be buying at the lowest point before price expands or breathes out again. So every time it makes a new higher low, I should be looking to buy in here before price breathes out. And vice versa, if we're looking to sell, I should be looking to sell at the lower highs in here. So every time price breathes in for the retracement, we should be looking to sell at the lower highs, right? All in here. Those are the best case scenarios to be selling at. We don't want to be buying or we don't want to be selling at the lowest point. We want to be selling at the highest point in the downtrend and vice versa. We want to be buying at the lowest point in the uptrend. So hopefully that's clear, um, but that is the base fundamental to what trading is. It's, it's how we're able to identify prices going up or is going down. So introduction to technical analysis part two. What are points and futures? Points are how analysts describe the measurements of price changes in the financial markets. How do I use points in my trading? You can use them in various ways, but the most common is assessing your risk before placing a position on or assessing your potential profits. So points are basically a way to measure how much risk you're going to get and how much reward you're going to get. The market moves in points. Other asset classes, they have different terms for them, um, such as pips or other um, terms for it, but I want to keep it very simple. It's simply a term used for if price is going from point A to point B, it's moved in a certain amount of points. So it's the way we measure it. Another example is backtesting particular years or months of an asset class and seeing how many points it has historically moved lower or higher. So you'll hear people say, price has moved, you know, 1,000 points this year and, or on the vice versa, price has moved lower, you know, 500 points, 1,000 points. So um, it depends on the day, the week, the month, whatever you're looking at, price will move in a certain amount of points. What is risk slash reward? Risk slash reward ratio is a measurement of expected potential reward, return and risk of a trade. So examples of risk to reward is one risk, one reward, one risk, two reward. So it may seem a little confusing. If I'm risking, let's say, $10, my risk would be, would be one. If my reward is 10, I would have a what we would call a one-to-one. -one. Um, ideally, you want your potential reward to be more than your risk. So you can see one risk, you want to have, let's say you're risking $10 to have a reward of $20. So that's the best case scenario where your risk, your reward is double whatever you're risking. So um, this can go for a lot of different risk to reward ratios is what we call. You could have $10 risk for a $40 reward. We'd call that a one to four risking $10 to make $30. That's called a one to three risking $10 to $20. That's a one to two. And then a one to one would be risking $10 to make $10. So um, that's the way. If you're wanting to put a position on, you're able to measure how much you're risking versus um, how much you're potentially getting as your reward. When should I trade? So there are several time intervals throughout the day that induce more volatility into the market. So specifically with futures, 
um, you want to be keying in on what we call the New York session. So for us who are residing in the U.S., it's in the morning time. So it's from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time. And if you're familiar, we've there's a term called the opening bell, which is at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that is my advice is to look at that main New York session in the morning and to be trading that because typically that is the most volatile time to be trading. And if you're looking at this just through the lens of a, a job, that's the only time you really need to be dedicating uh, is just between the hour and a half window. That's the only time that you should be really dedicating to this in terms of practicing in a real live market, because that's going to give you the most movement. New York session, the PM session. So there's two sessions that we call. So there's an AM session that I mentioned, and then there's a PM session, which is from 2 PM to 5 PM Eastern standard time. Um, there's something called the lunch hour. So in between the New York session, AM session that I mentioned, and between the New York session PM, there's a one hour interval called the lunch. And typically you don't want to be trading inside of that because price action can be a little bit dull and lethargic. You don't want to be a part of that. You want to be trading inside of times where price is moving a lot. Um, there's a couple other sessions out there called the London session. Um, this is from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. So typically, if you're in, in the U.S., it's going to be overnight. Um, I don't trade this session because, of course, I'm going to be sleeping. But if you elect to choose that or it fits within your schedule, you can do so. Um, the other session is called the Asian, and that's from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can pick and choose which ones you would like to trade inside of. But I would elect to advise all of you to trade the New York AM session. So ICT has something called the silver bullet time zone. What is the silver bullet? The silver bullet is a lecture taught by ICT, which during a one hour period, a specific pattern will form in the market and you will ex look to execute upon that. So for an example, during the New York AM session, the silver bullet will be between 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So he has a video on his YouTube channel that you can go over and he really simplifies it. But I think this is an amazing starting point for a newer trader to even intermediate to advanced because basically you're setting your clock to one hour a day where you're looking for a specific pattern and you're looking to execute within that time time zone because you can expect volatility to be inside of the market. Um, it's a really easy time zone to look for. There's another one called the PM Session Silver Bullet from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then there's a London Session Silver Bullet from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So whatever fits in within your schedule, you can elect to choose these time zones. Introduction to Fundamental Analysis. So what is Fundamental Analysis? Fundamental analysts study anything that can affect the asset's value from macroeconomics factors such as the state of the economy, industry conditions, the company's effectiveness slash management. How do we utilize fundamentals? Each week there will be fundamentals at specific times, otherwise called news event drivers, which will induce volatility into the market. So for me, just as experience, you're going to be utilizing each week before you start the trading week, looking at something called Forex Factory. So down here, where do I find these fundamentals? The most common website is called forexfactory.com. Again, if you want more information, you can YouTube basically anything I mentioned on here, and it will guide you to the right place. Inside here, you will see fundamentals laid out for the week ahead. Um, you can use these in various ways. Depending on your style, you can use them to get into the market before or after they release. Basically, what it is is it induces volatility. It will move the market very, very quickly. Right. So depending on what is coming out for that week, it's it's going to move the market either higher or lower. And each week as an analyst, we map these out and we see what the news event news event drivers are ahead of us. Um, it's something I wouldn't worry too much about right away um, if you're just getting your feet wet with trading. But it's something to keep your eye on because it does affect the market um, and you're able to set your time and your schedule to it every single week and see how it plays out. Um, the most common 
higher volatility news event drivers, um, what we call is CPI, NFP, and FOMC. Journal those down. Keep it in the back of your mind because you're going to need to know those at a later point. Um, again, to break it down and make it very easy for you, basically, it's just a, a time for when the market will move a lot. If there is a specific news event driver, then the market will move a lot. So let's say there's one at 7.30 a.m. The market will move. You're going to see right at that 7.30 time, price will move a lot because um, whether the state of the economy, whether the company, the asset that you're trading, something is happening. Um, if it's good news, if it's bad, the market will move up or will move lower. That's as simply as I can really put it for fundamentals. Um, so hopefully this video was able to give you a brief insight to technicals and into fundamentals. I try to make it as simplistic as I possibly can. The next video is going to be over liquidity and getting into the fine details of ICT's concepts. So until then, I will see you guys in the next video.